Hey, it's Marcus, and welcome to another episode of Between the Bellows. So in the last two months, I've been sharing some great stories of artists and makers, but it made me wonder if there was somebody else out there who is just as dedicated to their passion, but as a sport. So an elite athlete is who I went searching for. I was lucky to get connected with Isaac Doderlein, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu world champion who competes at the highest level in the sport. I dropped in on a training session with Isaac at UACTP, Undefeated's training facility in Los Angeles, California, where he was gearing up for his next competition. So let's go meet Isaac. My name is Isaac Dorline. I'm a professional jiu-jitsu athlete. And I'm the head instructor here at UACTP. So jiu-jitsu is designed basically for one-on-one -on -one combat for, for a smaller person to, be, to defeat a bigger person. Since we utilize grappling, it's a lot of leverage and weight distribution and understanding how to control your body and put someone into weak positions where necessarily size and strength doesn't matter. Um, obviously, once you get to like a certain level and there's two people that know jiu-jitsu, then those kind of things matter. So they say 90% of fights end up on the ground. Two guys fighting, obviously standing up, you, have, you can box, you can kick and things like that. Once it gets to the ground, most people don't, they don't know what to do. So jiu-jitsu is, is designed, the art is designed for us to be able to utilize the ground and, and gravity and, and all those kind of things to, to basically win, win a fight. When I did the SATs throughout high school, you know, I had always had bad grades and it was, it was pretty evident to me that the college life and going the traditional route wasn't gonna work for me. So when I graduated high school, I remember all my friends were going off to college and all I was doing was sitting around all day waiting for like the one jiu-jitsu session that I could um, have access to where I, where I was living in Arizona. And I realized that I was, this is something that I had an aptitude for. This is the one thing that I was good at. So I needed to maximize it. And where I was at the time made me realize I'm just wasting time when I'm not on the mat. So I need to go somewhere where I can maximize that time. So that's when I made the move to come out to LA to train with Corbinia and become a full-time jiu-jitsu athlete. And I've always had the goal of being a black world champion. So I've never stopped working until I got that goal. So I don't have a plan B. I think that's also why I've, I've gotten to this, to this point in my career. I, don't, I think that if I had something else that I was chasing or like a, something that helped me stay in a comfort zone, I wouldn't have achieved these goals that I have gotten to. But at the end of the day, my goal is to make my name in the sport as one of the best Americans to ever do it in jiu-jitsu, if not the best American. And then, you know, maybe 10 years from now, I'd like to have a very successful academy and not just an academy, but, but like, a, like a chain of academies, right? I want to have like my own, like Alliance or Gracie Baja or like these other big gyms. I want to do something with my name and my brand as well. I have no other hobbies because I don't have time to waste. I want to be the best in the world. I have been the best in the world. I've been, I'm, I'm world champion and I want to be a multiple time world champion. So in order to do that, I have to make lots of sacrifices. You know, I get to the gym every day just before 8 a.m. before I teach an hour long class and I'm on the mat until 1 or 2 p.m. every day. It's almost like you're chasing the dragon of perfection. It's like, you know, you're never going to get there but you know that you can get close. And every day, like every time you have a really good day and you feel like things are kind of coming together, you feel like you're getting a little bit closer to that, to that level of like, oh, maybe I have perfect jujitsu, but then there's always gonna be a new reaction, always gonna be something, something that you haven't seen before. But the problem solving as aspect of that is gonna help me understand that once I figure that out, that's gonna take me to another level of understanding and like chasing that, that perfection. Even though I know I'll never get there, I think that's what keeps me going. And then kind of that obsession of like trying to master something that just really at the end of the day can't be mastered. Just place you right here in the center here. Do you feel that light on you there? I'm gonna have you have this shoulder forward. Yeah, like that. And can you take a step towards me a little bit? And then, like I said, just, you're gonna be looking right into the lens, just strong, confident posture. So I don't know. You can do whatever you want with your hands, as long as you don't amputate them behind you like this. All right, cool. I'm just gonna get some. Get a little bit closer. Can you go this way a little bit? 
Can you go this way? And then take a baby step back. Yep, right there. I'm just gonna turn you a little bit more. This way. Yep, just like that. So your posture will be there and then your gaze will be right there. Okay, cool. Your, your, your body is good there and then just turn at the neck and look right there. Cool. All right, I'm gonna get focus. UACTP is a beautiful space, but I had to place Isaac in the one spot the light looked good during that time of day. I'm shooting on my Apo Simar 300 millimeter lens, which is like a 50 mil on a full frame camera. And since I'm inside, the film I'm using today is Ilford HP5. All right, so once I load this, you can't move. So that's the position you gotta hold, okay? Feel good? Three, two, one. You know, it can sometimes be tricky to find an angle and a location if you've never seen the space before, but I really like how this photo came out. So I want to thank Isaac again for sharing his story with me and for inspiring me to train harder myself on the map. If you want to follow Isaac's journey, you can find his link to his Instagram in the description below. And if you like this channel, please like, subscribe, share with someone, help me grow an audience so I can keep sharing more stories with you all. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next episode.